Hey guys, welcome back to the laboratory. In this video, we are going to be looking at how mixtures are separated using filtration and crystallization. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe how filtration and crystallization are used to separate mixtures and identify when filtration and crystallization are used as separation techniques. So, let's go. When salt is added to water, something interesting happens. The salt molecules mix with the water molecules and appear to disappear. In chemistry, we say that the salt has dissolved. Together, the salt and water form a mixture called a solution. A solution is the mixture formed when a solute dissolves into a solvent. A solvent is a liquid that can dissolve a solid, and in this scenario, the solvent would be the water. This is the most common solvent found in mixtures. A solute is a solid that can be dissolved, and in this scenario, the solute would be the salt. All solutes are described as being soluble. This simply means that they are able to dissolve. In contrast, any substance described as insoluble cannot be dissolved. If we wanted to obtain the salt from this salt water solution, we would use a separation technique called crystallization. Crystallization is used to separate a soluble solid from a liquid. The salt water solution is poured into an evaporating basin and placed onto a tripod. A heat source, such as a Bunsen burner, is then placed beneath. The salt water is heated by the heat source, and as the water has a lower boiling point than a solute, it will begin to evaporate from the mixture first. The heating is stopped once all of the water has almost evaporated, and the solution is left to cool. At the end of the process, crystals of the salt are left behind in the evaporating basin. These are then dried by either patting or putting into an oven. And voila! you have just separated a soluble solid from a liquid. Filtration is a separation technique used in slightly different circumstances. Filtration is used to separate an insoluble solid from a liquid. This time, your solid has not dissolved into the mixture. We can use a mixture of sand and water as an example. To carry out this process, you would need a conical flask and a filter funnel that is lined with filter paper. Your mixture of sand and water is then poured through the filter funnel. However, the sand is trapped in the filter funnel as it is unable to pass through the tiny holes in the filter paper. The water, however, is able to pass through and collects in the conical flask. At the end of the process, the insoluble solid is trapped in the filter paper and we call this the residue. The liquid is collected in the conical flask and we call this the filtrate. Here's an example of an exam style question that you may be asked on this topic. Pause the video, read the question and take your time to answer. I'll be waiting for you on the other end with the mark scheme. This question here is a juicy one. A sample of rock salt contains a mixture of sodium chloride and some insoluble substances. This first line is already very important. Sodium chloride is the scientific name for table salt and at GCSE level you are expected to know this. Table salt is soluble, so in other words, this first sentence is telling you that rock salt contains a mixture of soluble and insoluble substances. The rock salt is added to water. When the rock salt is added to water, the sodium chloride will dissolve into the water, forming a sodium chloride solution. However, your insoluble substances will not dissolve. The mixture is then filtered. When the mixture is filtered, your insoluble substances will be trapped in the filter funnel, and the sodium chloride solution will collect in the conical flask. So, how do you obtain a sample of pure, dry sodium chloride crystals? Guys, this question is simply a very fancy way of asking you to describe crystallization. That's it. And for a free mark question, that means three good points or steps. So, your first marking point is for mentioning that you would need to heat the solution. The second is for indicating that you will then leave the rest of the solution to crystallise. And the final is for mentioning that you will dry the crystals by either patting them down or putting them in an oven. So, how did you do? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, that's it for this video guys. Thank you for joining me in the laboratory. Please leave a like on this video if you found it useful. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss another one. See you soon!